We are going to take a look at the rule of total probability and also at Bayes' rule. I'm going to start you off with the situation first so that way we can kind of see where our formulas are going to come from. So let's say that in a club, 80% of the members are male and 20% are female. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this box right here and this is going to represent the club members. And over here I have males and I have my females and 80% are males. 20% of them are females. Then it says 50% of the males play video games and 60% of the females play video games. And then the question says what's the probability that a randomly selected member of the club plays video games? Well now you might think that you just need to add the 60 with the 50, but the first problem with that is that would put you over 100. The second problem with that is that the um, the male and female groups are not split up evenly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to think through this using some numbers first. So here's the circle represents those that play video games. And for the males it says 50% of the males play video games. Well if we let 80 represent the number of males that are in this club and 20 be the number of females that are in the club. If I have 80 members and I want 50% of them, I would take the 80 times the 0.5 and get 40. So there would actually be 40 members inside this that play video games. Then it also says that 60% of the females. Well, in order to get 60% of the females, I need to take my number of females, take 60% of them to find my females. So there's 12 females out of the group that play video games. Now from this diagram, we can figure out our question. It says, what is the probability that a randomly selected member of the club plays video games? So what I need to do is I need to figure out the total number of people that play video games. So I would take that 40 plus that 12 and I need to divide it by the total number of members I have. When I do that I get 52, whoops that should be a 20. I get 52 out of 100, which would be 0.52, and it would be 52%. So the probability of randomly selecting a person that plays video games is 52 out of 100, or 0.52. So what that tells us is that 52% of the people in this club play video games. Now notice that 52% doesn't come from just adding our 50 and our 60. It actually comes from quite a process that we just did right here. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at that process and generalize it so that we can apply it to all sorts of different situations. So what we're going to start with first is we're going to start with labeling a little chart over here. And up here I'm going to have males and my females because that's what we're going to end up calling the exhaustive piece. That's what fills the entire sample space. So everybody in this club is either a male or a female. So everybody fits into that category. And then we're going to put the members here. So for the males, 80% or 0.8 of the males are, or of the members are males. And then over here in our female, we're going to put our 0.2, our 20%. Then the next part we're going to put plays video games. Well, out of the video games, it tells me that 50% of the males play video games. So I'm going to have a 0.5 here. And then it tells me that 60% of the females play video games. So I'm going to fill both of those in. Now I'm going to put some different labels here. My males, I'm going to call that A1. And my females, I'm going to call that event A2. Playing a video game is going to be event B. So what I have here, in this first box right here, this 80%, that's the probability of A1. This 20%, the 0.2, that's the probability of A2. The 50% here, this 0.5, that's the probability of having a male, so that's the probability of A1 and playing a video game. And then the 0.6 is the probability of A2 being a female and playing a video game. So now what we want to do is we want to look at these calculations in this process we did. Because what we're trying to do is we are trying to find the probability 
that a person plays video games. So we're really trying to find the probability of B. And notice the B is a conditional part. All of these values over here in the B column, that's the probability based off of being male. So we're trying to find the total probability of just playing video games, not this conditional part. So what we did was we started by taking that 80 times the 0.5 and got 40. Well, we still need to do that type of process, but now we need to um, do it all in decimals, in probabilities. So if I take my 80%, that's really 0.8, and I'm going to multiply that by 0.5. And that's where I came up with that 40. Then the next one, I took the 20 times the 60%. Well, I'm going to take 0.2, because we're doing probability now, not actually numbers of people, and I'm going to times it by 0 0.6. That gave me the 40 and the 12. Then if you look at what I did to find my total probability here, I took that 40 and I added it to that 12. So I'm going to take these two, the 0.8 times 0.5, and I'm going to add it to the 0.2 times the 0.6. Now up here, when I did this problem, I had to divide it by my total number of people. But because we are working in probabilities, we don't have to do that division anymore. What's going to end up happening, this 0.8 times this 0.5 will give us 0 0.40, plus the 0.2 times the 0.6 will give us 0 0.12. Add those together, and that gives us our 0.52, which was our answer. Our probability of picking a randomly selected person that plays a video game, 0.52. So now we need to change this process into some symbols. So the first thing is we need to look at what was the point 0.8. Well, the point 0.8 was the probability of being A1. Then we go to the point 0.5. Well, the point 0.5 was the probability of A1 and B. Then we added that to this expression. Well, in the point 2 is the probability of A2. And then the point 6 was the probability of A2 and B. Well, now what would happen is if we had three different categories, instead of males and females, maybe we had um, Democrats, Republican, and other, we would keep going. We would keep adding all these individual probabilities. This right here is the beginning of a formula that we're going to use. This is actually the formula that led us to this answer that we did up here. Okay, before we get to the actual formula, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some, or go over some vocab. The first thing is when we had male and female, we only had two categories. Well, this can actually be extended to an infinite number of categories, but one thing that happens is that when you have an exhaustive event, that means your categories fill the entire sample space. The mutually exclusive part means they don't overlap. So what that means is that, um, let's say we're talking about voters in the United States, and I have Democrats, Republicans, and other. All voters will fit into one of those categories. They'll either be a Democrat, a Republican, or an other but they will not be both. You won't be a Democrat while at the same time being a Republican. So the exhaustive piece means that all the voters will fill in the entire sample space. They will fit somewhere in these categories. And then the mutually exclusive part means that they won't overlap. You're not going to be a Democrat and a Republican at the same time. That was like our male and our female categories that we had in that last example. Okay, now when we put in the video game piece, then we put in this other characteristic that overlaps our exhaustive pieces. So if this was the Democrats, Republicans, and others again, maybe this is a, um, a characteristic of owning a dog. So it would be this area right here would be the Democrats that own dog. What percent of Democrats own dogs? 
and then this would be the percentage of Republicans that own dogs and the percentage of others. So the, the event B is the event that occurs in conjunction with our exhaustive pieces. So here's going to be part of our formula here. This is what we just looked at. In this case though, um, our total probability would be the sum of these joint probabilities. But we don't necessarily always have that information. What happens sometimes is that we only know the conditional pieces. Like in the video game example, I told you that 50% of the males played video games. Well, that was a conditional piece, so we didn't know the joined probabilities. And if you remember from last week, we looked at how the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to replace each one of these expressions with this equivalent because the probability of A and B, which I have right here, is this. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to have the probability of A, 1, times the probability of B given A, 1. So I'm replacing this expression with the equivalent of it. Then I'm going to go on to my next one. The probability of A2 and B, well I'm going to replace it with this expression, is equal to the probability of A2 times the probability of B given A, because they are equivalent. And then we're going to do the same thing with the last one. The probability of A3 and B, I'm going to replace it with the probability of A3 times the probability of B given A3. This can keep going if we had A4 and A5 and A6. It would, it would just keep on going. So what we need to do is we need to rewrite this slightly. And this is our rule of total probability, which is the short way of writing out this. It tells me that the probability of B happening is equal to the summation, which remember summation means to add up, the probability of A sub J, and the subscript J is just telling me take A1, and then do A2, and then do A3, all the way up until we run out of A's, so that's what the K on top here. We have our index starting at 1 and we end at K, times the probability of B given your A sub J. So this right here is just a short way of writing do all this. Take the probability of A1 times the conditional probability. Add that to the probability of A2 times the conditional probability add that to the probability of A3 times its conditional, and so on and so on. We will end up using this when we talk about Bayes' rule. So this is our rule of total probability.